The guys are already working out. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown already look great. Peyton Pritchard setting the tone. And was Tatum inspired by this podcast? It's all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Bread. It's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT. No, we not on the Knicks. Flush a competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a great team going up in the rafters. Watch the Steve game in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic document and domination. Matter pen of back bay. It's all C's nation. Rain and Jay's how we started. Raisin Ben is how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. I got you covered every Monday through Friday. And when they start playing, bonus podcasts after every game, no matter when. So make sure you're subscribed whenever you, wherever you get your podcast, and whenever, I suppose. And watch the show on YouTube, subscribe there, get notified when I drop new videos. Get into that comment section. Always let me know what you're thinking and interact with a growing community of Celtics fans just like you. So, uh, hey, by the way, I'm John Corrales, if you're new to the show. Uh, I've been covering this team for about 20 years now. I'm doing it right now as a beat writer for Boston Sports Journal. I'm also an author, two-time author. Built Different is my latest book, celebrating the Celtics' 18th banner. Buy it now at johncorrales.com. 30 bucks, personalized copies uh, in the U.S. Uh, we can talk if you're shipping internationally. Uh, but I'll get I'll get into more of that uh, a little bit later. Uh, but today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase of last minute tickets. Well, lots to get to here before Media Day tomorrow. This is the Tuesday show. Tomorrow's podcast, all Media Day. I will be there. I'll be asking questions. If you're watching the Media Day stream, you'll hear my voice asking the Celtics plenty of questions. So uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'll pick out the best quotes and share them here, and we'll talk about them. But the guys are already there. They're already working out. They've already been uh, at the facility. Uh, Christoph Sporzingis just got back to Boston, putting out his uh, Instagram with the coffee from his apartment, which, of course, he's got a coffee. He's, he's, he's more of a, ca- a caffeine addict than I am, and I'm a pretty big caffeine addict. He loves his coffee. Everybody's here. Everybody's back. Uh, and Al Horford was uh, uh, interviewed by the CLNS guys uh, at his camp. And he had a couple of quotes here that I thought were, uh, I guess, encouraging to get us started. So this serves as a sort of preview uh, because he says, quote, Jason looks great, in great shape. Jalen looks unbelievable as well. I just know that they're ready to go and I'm ready to go, and we're just excited. So right away, first thing that we get, the first bit of inside look at what this team might be is Al Horford gushing about Jason looks great and Jalen looks great. Now, we've already seen Jalen's Instagram. Uh, He posts plenty of shirtless stuff. He is in fantastic shape. There's no doubt about that. Jason, I don't know if Jason is capable of gaining any fat. He has basically from his rookie year to now put on a bunch of muscle and he looks like a, like a machine built NBA player. I don't know. I don't know what he eats or what I can't possibly fathom him having more than like whatever, 3% body fat, 4%, whatever he's got. Tell you what, it's a lot less than what I've got. That's for damn sure. Uh, it's it's kind of impressive that he's able to keep himself in that kind of shape. It takes a lot of discipline, but sometimes it's also kind of naturally what people get. But he's we know he's going to be ready. We know Jalen's going to be ready. But any thoughts right away, my reaction is any thoughts that we had of these guys coming in and maybe, you know, taking it easy. First, first impression is maybe not. Maybe the, this isn't how it's going to go. Maybe these guys are really hungry. And in the third segment, because I want to get into the other stuff, in the third segment, I will talk about Jason reacting to Joe Mazzulla on this podcast and kind of it serving as a a bit of inspiration, uh, for which I will take complete credit. 
Uh, you can all thank me personally if they get to banner 19. Uh, I set the tone. I came into camp right away, uh, making sure that this this team was ready to go. So basically what I'm saying is I deserve a ring. If they get to banner 19, uh, I deserve a ring, and and that will be explained in the third segment. But regardless, to, to hear that Jason is in great shape and Jalen is in great shape, and you know, Al doesn't have to say these things, right? It, Al is careful about the words that he picks, and he is certainly going to protect his guys. And he's not going to let narratives from the summer define what this team is. He's very smart when it comes to that. He's very media savvy. But he he also knows you don't have to say that Jason looks great and Jalen looks unbelievable. And you know, you can just say, I'm excited, right? There, there are words in it may be a little bit of a semantic thing. I'm a word guy. I think words matter. I think words have power and meaning and all that stuff. And the the words people choose to say carry a lot of weight. You can decide, I am going to say this this way, whatever it is, whether it's about the Celtics, whether it's about something at work, whether it's something about life when you're talking to your significant other. The words you choose mean something. The words you choose to include, the words you choose to omit. All of that stuff is meaningful. So Al Horford kind of singing their praises. I've said, we I did a podcast last week about how do Jalen and Jason lead as champions? We haven't seen that yet. Are they able to lead when the Celtics are successful? And I think it's a valid question, especially because Last year, not so much, but prior to this, the MO for the Celtics has been they don't handle prosperity very well. Every big lead was blown, again, not last season, but prior to that. Uh, anytime things were at their best, something would, would happen, and you'd be like, oh, God, here we go again. And they shed that last year. So this falls in line with maybe that turn, that that understanding, like we can't let success get to our heads. We can't let the success, we can't buy into it because we know failure is coming. We have to navigate both. But considering that much history of that stuff happening, it's not out of the question to, to wonder like, okay, how will they lead as champions? Well, here's our first test. Here's, here's our first taste, test and taste of Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum as champions coming into camp looking like they are in great shape. They are ready to go. They are practicing. They look good in practice. All of that stuff, super important. Now, that's we're taking Al's word for it, and we have to see it for ourselves, and we're going to. But right away, my first thing is this is a good sign that Tatum and Brown are here and focused and ready to do what we want them to do. Not focused on the past, but ready to move forward. Another question I've had here is about the Celtics bench and exactly what can we expect? Can this Celtics bench, which was good last year, can it be better? Can it be a, a, the type of bench that makes Joe Mazzulla, as I said in a podcast last week, another thing, can, when Joe gets out of his way and lets and, and follows the plan to reduce the minutes, can this bench make that easy for him? We got a little taste of that from Al Horford, which we will talk about next. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time, the place to go for those last-minute tickets. It's got a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live event even easier. And this is any live event. This is sports, music, theater, comedy. If it's selling tickets online, there's a very good chance that it is on Game Time. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Super easy. 
They've got the seat views. So when you're scrolling through, you can tell this is what I'm going to see. If you set that all in pricing, you'll see the final price that you're going to get charged at checkout. So no surprise fees. They've got the lowest price guarantee. Find those same tickets in the same row, the same seats for less. You get 110% of the different difference credited to you. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen. Every day, go check out Locked On NBA. Make that your second listen. It's a great show. I don't just say that because I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison of Locked On Pelicans. It's a great show to keep you up to date on all the big stories of the NBA. Rotating hosts all week, so you get different perspectives throughout the week. So uh, go check it out wherever you get your podcasts. Make it your second listen after Locked On Celtics. Uh, Peyton Pritchard is impressing Al Horford. Uh his quote, here's Al, Al Horford again talking to CLNS. Uh, I think that Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett, and then, but then Peyton Pritchard, I mean, Peyton is setting the tone. He looks really good. And then he says all of our young guys as well, Jordan Walsh, Baylor. Uh, Baylor has looked pretty impressive these days. So that's good. That's all great. Uh, but Peyton is setting the tone. That's great. That's, that's what you want to hear. Not surprising at all that Peyton Pritchard is setting the tone for the Celtics. He's the the, he's the exact kind of guy that I would expect to come in and, and set the tone uh, in, in these types of workouts. He's going to come in from day one and be that spark plug, be that that guy who who's playing at top speed from the beginning, kind of pushing everybody. You need that. You need somebody that's going to challenge the other guys. You need somebody who's going to challenge Jason and Jalen. You're going to have to have somebody out there that, yeah, you all follow the, the the two J's, but you want somebody that's also established that can come in and be like, hey, keep up with me. Stay on my level. Because if you're in a scrimmage and Pritchard is burning you, you got to keep up. Pritchard coming in, setting the tone. That's great news. Celtics bench. We know that when fully healthy, Horford will come off the bench. That's That's going to be... Uh, very helpful. Pritchard, obviously, Sam Hauser uh, will obviously be very helpful, but you also have Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman and other guys that are going to come in and uh, have to fill important minutes. Now that's Cornett, and we've talked about Cornett and Tillman and Namiash Keda. Those guys, the bigs, are going to going to be ex extraordinarily important for the Celtics. Can this bench? Take a step forward. Can this bench show us a little something extra that that we didn't see last year? Maybe it's maybe it is in the form of Luke Cornett kind of expanding his range and being more comfortable and confident in his shot and and maybe hitting a couple of three pointers. Can Xavier Tillman become a, a, a better three point shooter? We've talked about that. And can Sam Hauser be an even better defender? Can he be a guy that off the dribble makes makes a couple more plays? Can he be a little bit more of a well-rounded player? He's always, He's been taking steps in that direction. Maybe the contract helps him kind of like ease his mind and say, all right, I am, I'm capable of it. I know they paid me to do this. I'm going to put this work in and I'm going to come in. Just a little bit, something more off the dribble. Even if it's a, a more confident mid-range shot or a move, a hesitation move, something that can get him all the way to the basket, something that can get him some free throws. He's an incredible free throw shooter, obviously. So maybe getting to the line when he's not, when he's being run off the three point line, that's, that's going to be a big deal. And Pritchard, obviously, uh, because white and, and holiday are going to need their minutes reduced. Pritchard's going to be looked at to eat up some of those minutes, especially in the regular season. He's he's going to get his 20, 25 minutes a game. And that's all going to be critical minutes for him. Can he be an even better like defender? Can he be somebody that, you know, I was talking about him being picked on and some of it's just natural because of his height, but can he be so disruptive 
with his energy that you kind of negate some of that stuff where you're, you're just making somebody uncomfortable. And that's Pritchard's the guy that you want picking somebody up full court. Brian Scalabrini talks about this on the pot on, on the broadcast from time to time. You'll hear him. You just want somebody to come up and turn a guy two, three times before he sets up the, the offense. And when we say turn a guy, very simple. If you don't know, if a guy's dribbling the ball up the court and there's nobody bothering him, he just dribbles straight up the court. But if you come up and bother him, then he has to move to the side. And like he has to put his shoulder in between him, the ball, and the defender. And then he'll turn, literally turn. And if he's dribbling up with his right, he'll turn to his left to try to shake the defender and, and kind of zigzag his way up the floor. And if you turn him two, three times, well, he's just getting the ball over at the eight second count. And he's not surveying the floor and like making a call and saying, okay, I'm picking out, okay, there's my mismatch. There's this, there's that. Pritchard's job is to make the opposing point guard have to waste time worried about Pritchard. So coming in, setting that tone and being that guy is huge. And that disrupts the other team's offense. And that makes it much more likely that they're going to miss or turn the ball over. And then the Celtics can get out and run and score into tra in transition, maybe get some of those transition three-pointers with him on the floor who can hit from basically anywhere, with Hauser on the floor who can hit from basically anywhere. And guys getting open looks, transition, transition baskets, uh, transition three-pointers are a great way to get clean looks. So somebody like Pritchard, Stepping up and just being that guy at a higher level this season, leading the bench, especially November, December, that's going to be a critical element to getting through the non Porzingis time. You got to figure out. We talked about Tom and I talked about in last week the, the podcast about the defense. When the Celtics are 12 points better than the opposition with Porzingis and one and a half points better with than the opposition with Al Horford as the starting center. Well, that one and a half points is kind of an average where you say, okay, there's that, that they very easily can be a negative a few nights. Where can you make up that 11 points or so difference throughout the game without Porzingis? Who's going to step up? You're not going to you're not going to find somebody who scores as well as Porzingis and does the same things. You're not going to find somebody who defends necessarily as well as Porzingis and is that much of a rim protection threat. It's going to be a a combination of guys. Cornet, Kata, Tillman, they're all going to have to step up off the bench. Pritchard with that pressure that I was talking about is going to have to step up. Hauser's going to get targeted still. Uh he's going to have to step up. If this bench can be better than last year, Missoula giving guys uh, a few extra minutes on, on the bench will be easier and getting through these non Porzingis minutes would be a, a kind of like, or non, non Porzingis months could be uh, almost like the Celtics last year were actually pretty good without Porzingis. Like their record was really good without Porzingis. If you can do that again, that that would scare the NBA. That really would be scary to the NBA because I know Porzingis missing time is kind of like the one thing op the opposition is hanging their hats on. Well, if, if Porzingis isn't healthy, then maybe the Celtics are vulnerable. If the Celtics can go out via this bench and Pritchard setting the tone, if they can go out and still lead the Celtics to wins, then the rest of the NBA has got to worry about the Celtics because missing Porzingis isn't isn't the 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 worst thing in the world for them. It's not great, but they can get through it. So, and they've already proven that some. Now they got to prove it again. So great to hear from Al Horford about the bench and those guys. Now, what about Jason Tatum and his quote? What he said and how this podcast played a role in it is coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. If you're an NFL fan, you can get this season rolling 
with a big return on FanDuel. That's what makes it America's number one sports book. If you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats. You can view live play-by-play and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You can keep up with all the trends of the game. You can keep up with everything all on that one page. You don't have to go between you know, different browsers or whatever. Keep that app open. You're going to get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet at FanDuel.com. Patriots are 10-point uh, underdogs against San Francisco. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, can't say I blame them, though. So whichever way you want to throw that 5 bucks, that might be a good place to do it. It doesn't matter if you win or lose because you're going to get those $200 in bonus bets guaranteed no matter what. Set your limits. Make sure you're setting those that budget using the tools that FanDuel makes available so you can gamble responsibly and have fun at FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Built Different is my latest book. Go pick it up at johncorrales.com. Uh, go to the store. $30 domestic shipping uh, So within the United States. If you've already bought a book, I have four by six uh, labels that I will personalize. Uh, and you can stick that inside the book, personalize and sign. So you have that. Uh, so you can ha- sort of have a signed copy. That's sold for 10 bucks. Uh, international orders, we can consider that. But if you can find a way to get the book through whichever website that you can get with, with maybe cheap shipping, the label and the card that I send is very easy. It's like just a few dollars for me to ship that. So versus me shipping a book, which is like $40. So if you can buy the book on your own and find cheap shipping, uh, internationally, then come order that sticker and that can go out like a breeze. So make sure you're checking that out at johncorrales.com. All right. Jason Tatum, clearly inspired by Joe Mazzula here on the lockdown Celtics podcast where Joe was on this podcast and we talked about it. Uh, he said defending, I don't want to say defending a championship that's passive aggressive, right? He, uh, wants to talk about attacking. He talked about the animal kingdom where that the, the, the most uh, successful animals are the ones that attack. And Jason Tatum loved it. He loved it. In fact, in a, in an interview with the Boston globe, he said, Joe Missoula, he had a great quote the other day. He said, we're not defending anything. We're chasing another championship. We enjoyed it all summer. We enjoyed it during training camp. I can't wait for opening night to get our rings and see the banner being raised. But honestly, after opening night, we have to put it behind us. It's a new season. Last year was last year. Great quote from Jason Tatum. And clearly he saw either. I'm going to assume that Jason Tatum is listening to this podcast because why not? Uh, But it's also possible that someone saw the quote and showed it to him. And he's like, that's pretty fun. But regardless, uh, I love the fact that the quote resonated with with Tatum because it is a unique way to look at it. And I do think that's actually going to be how these guys approach this season. I feel like that quote, the we're not defending a championship, we're chasing another championship, I think that is going to be the the headline for this season. Now, of course, I'm proud that it was said on this podcast, and uh, it's great that that's going to be the clip. But I think it's the best quote that you're going to get for this this season. That quote defines how the Celtics should approach this upcoming season. We are not defending anything. We are going to attack it. We are going to chase another championship. And that sets these guys in that mindset of we're not resting on anything. Yeah, we got our rings. Yeah, that's our banner up there now. And we're a part of history. Now move forward. Next, to quote Joe Mazzulla again, nobody cares. That's great. Nobody cares now. What, what have you done for me now? Because if the Celtics fail, if they falter, if they fall apart, People are going to jump all over them be like, oh, championship hangover, or they, it's one and done. 
you know, how great can you really be? So you don't want to hear that as uh, an NBA player, as a competitor. So to hear Jason talk about we're chasing another championship, we're not defending anything. That tells me, now combine that with what I said in the first segment. Jason comes in, Al Horford's like, man, he looks great. He looks ready. And he comes in and is like, last year was last year. We, you know, we got to figure out a way to get better. We wanted to approach the game with the same mindset. We did an amazing job of that last year. We are pretty good last season. We believed it. He's, so if you believed it last year, believe it again this year. Go out there and don't do the same things, but have the same mindset because the same things aren't going to happen. It's a different season. It's a different approach, but, and if you need to use uh, certain motivations here or there, like Joe said on this podcast, that's great in the short term, but the long-term goal is growth. Get better, get better as a leader. It's why one of my for my first camp question was, how are they as leaders? Get better as a leader. Get better as a star player. Get better as the main option. Get better as a distributor. That's all great. Everybody has now seen that before. So what do you do? You don't have a lot of sequels out there that impress anybody when they're the exact same as the first movie, right? You say, oh, that was, that was nice. It wasn't as good as the first one. You know, you want to impress somebody? Give me Empire Strikes Back for this one. Okay? Who's going to be Darth Vader on this? Is it Jalen? Jalen's the one who said he was out for blood. Right? Look at look at Joel Embiid when he's crumpled on the floor after flopping and tell him, I am your father. That's what I want the Celtics to be this year. Empire Strikes Back. I think Jason, with his approach here, I think he gets it. I think he gets it. Now, we'll see. Training camp starts on Wednesday. So, again, Tuesday, media day, I will be there. I will be asking a lot of the questions. It'll be interesting to see how guys look, how they approach things, uh, the way they answer. Uh, so, that's going to be like the first thing that kind of say, okay, this – this informs my opinion of where this season might go. Let's let's kind of see how they talk the talk. But then Wednesday, we'll start seeing them walk the walk. Last preseason, I saw these guys, and I was like, whoa, that team is playing in June. Book it. I wrote about it on Boston Sports Journal. I said, make your plans because this team will be playing in June. They should win a championship because of the way they looked in preseason. You could tell. Will I have that same feeling this year? Will you be able to tell? We're going to find out. So far, early returns. First, the I guess the trailer for this upcoming movie, if I'm sticking with the movie analogy. Trailer looks good. Let's see what they've got. I will be here. I will share quotes. I will. You will hear things that are said. I will react to things that are said. And uh, that's going to be how the rest of this week goes. Uh, I will be at practice. I will let you know how practice goes, the things I see, uh, the things that are said, all of it. It's an inside look. You can't keep up with everything. I can. That's my job. And I will bring it to you here on this podcast daily, Monday through Friday. When they start playing, post-game podcast every time they play. So make sure you are locked on to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into that comment section and let me know how you're feeling about this team, about what I say, and then share the podcast. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.